Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to integrate Strider with MXM. So we have our character here, and this is just taken from the demo scene, and he runs at this speed, and he can either run or he can walk, and he can't really do anything in between. I mean, he can stop as well. When I add sprint, he could sprint as well, but we're still missing all those speeds in between. Also, what if we want to go beyond this max speed that we're going right now? Well, we can integrate Strider with MXM to do that, and Strider will change the speed, but also in a believable way by warping the legs with IK and all that to make it more believable. And we can get all the in-between speeds that we're currently missing. Now, it's not strictly necessary. A lot of games have these digital speeds, but if you want all the in-betweens or you want to go beyond the max speed of your animation, Strider is an option. So the first thing we need to do is actually import Strider. I've already done that. So I've got Strider and MXM imported into the same project. They have all the same dependencies in terms of jobs and all that. And what we want to get is the integration package installed. So under plugins, animation uprising, Strider, integrations, we can unpackage this Strider MXM integration package, and it's going to give us just a single script. Now this is an alternative Strider biped component that we can attach to an MXM character that will talk directly to MXM for you. So you don't have to tell Strider how much it should be warping with your own code. It's kind of just like, you could technically do this with your own code and using the typical Strider component, but why not have it MXM do the heavy lifting for you? So we have the script here now, and let's go to our character and we can add that component. And you can see there's two Strider components, the normal Strider biped component and Strider biped MXM. That's the one we want to use. And we want to attach it on the same game object as the MXM animator. So let's attach it. Now, unfortunately with the in integration, you don't get the lovely uh, um, component interface with the with the logo, but it's all essentially the same otherwise, except for these last few settings. But we're not going to look at that just yet. Let's uh, minimize that and we'll go to our MXM animator under warping. We, we want to look for longitudinal error warping and we want to change that to stride because we want to warp the stride to compensate for errors in trajectory. And this will make sense in a second. You'll get a little warning saying check uh, stride warper component is attached. I'm checking it. Yes, it's attached. I'm happy. So we can let that go. If you forget to attach it, it's going to cause errors. That's why I put that in there just in case. So we can close that now and let's hit play and see what happens. All right, so we have our character here. And if I walk, if I push just slightly on the stick, you can see Strider's doing its thing. It's, you know, reducing the, um, you know, the stride. And it's obviously exaggerated. You need to tweak it for your game. You know, you'll have a minimum amount you'll want. If I push more on the stick, you see the walk goes more to that normal speed. And if I'm pushing beyond, there we go. Now we go to running, we're running slowly and I keep pushing higher and the stride goes to its maximum stride. However, so we've got all the in-between speeds here now, but the problem is we don't have beyond the max speed. So how do we make it so that it can go beyond the max speed um, of the animations? So there's a few things we need to do here. Firstly, we need to change the trajectory generator to uh, have a higher top speed. So currently I've already configured the trajectory generator to have a max speed the same of the, as the animations. Let's create, make it higher to make it match something we want maybe for gameplay. Maybe I want it to go at 6.5 um, meters per second instead. Now, if I just change that and hit play, we're gonna see that that might cause a few problems. Um, so specifically, you can see the green trajectory that we're generating now is just way longer than the animations we have, and it's a bit of a mismatch. The animation still kind of works, but we're losing a lot of quality here. So that is just the first step. We need to now shape that trajectory down based on our input, and how do we do that? With input profiles. If you haven't seen the tutorials on input profiles, I suggest you do. It's very important. So we can see in our trajectory generator, we have our input profile here. Let's double click on it and we have our three ranges of inputs. So from zero to 0 0.1, it's gonna remap the magnitude of the input to zero. From 0 0.1 to 0 0.7, it's 0 0.42. So this is essentially your walking speed. And from 0 0.7 to one, so maximum on the stick is the one, we're gonna have maximum magnitude. Now, because our magnitude, our, our speed of our trajectory generator is higher than our animations, 
we actually need to shape this down to to be that number. So there's a bit of a trick here. You need to change this uh, input range to be 1.05 or something. If this is just because of floating point error errors. If we have our input at max on our joystick, sometimes it goes beyond um, one. So just make sure you do that or 1.1. And then we wanna change our magnitude to, let's have a guess, say 0 0.65. So now we're remapping that maximum input uh, to 0 0.65. And we can see now our trajectory is smaller. The trajectory generator is still at 6.5 here, but we've remapped it with our input profile down to be what that actual value is. Now, this is very important because the way that Strider, MXM tells Strider to um, warp the stride of the character is through the scaling of the input from the input profiles. And this is how it works. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've scaled that appropriately um, and we've set our trajectory, we need to do one last thing because you can see now, even though we've done that, our character's stride isn't warping and we're not going any faster. And that's because of the one setting on stride bike at MXM that is different. We have a min and max stride scale. The max stride scale is set to one. Well, we want to go beyond one, don't we? So let's make it say 1.5. Now we should see our character stride is going well beyond what it was before. We're moving really fast and that's very nice. So here we go, our stride is going beyond the maximum value and we can now use MXM to go at the speed that we want it to go rather than whatever animations we have. So that's a very useful uh, use case for Strider alongside MXM. Um, there you go, it's working pretty fine there. Now there's one important thing to note before I end the video, is that in our MXM animator set settings under options, we really need to have this past trajectory mode to set to copy from current pose. And I'll show you why. Because if I go to actual history, so actual history of the character, because we're warping the stride and hence also the speed of the character, you can see that the past trajectory just doesn't line up with any animations. Our animations have the pre-baked data at the speeds of those animations. And this is gonna cause a mismatch in our animation data and it could cause problems in our animation. It's actually working okay here, but that's not always gonna be the case. So I highly recommend that you set past trajectory mode to copy from current pose. And it looks like it's literally perfectly the same, but the debug gizmos are sort of one frame delayed. So there is a little bit of a difference and it is helping in the matching, but I feel like you get a bit better, um, a bit better matching going on and quality when you use uh, copy from current pose. In essence, anytime you are changing the mo motion of your character that is not part of the animation, so a procedural motion change, you really need to be using copy from current pose or you're gonna have struggle with uh, matches. There you go, that is integrating Strider with MXM. Let's just do one last test. We can start out really slow and we can increase the speed. We can have a bigger walking stride and it gets larger until we get to there. There's actually one last thing I want to point out. I recommend not having playback speed changes. So max playback speed one um, to, and I'll set that to zero because you don't really wanna usually change the speed of your animations with motion matching. It causes issues that I don't like. So there you go, Strider for MXM. Uh, that's how you integrate it. And I hope that works for you. Thank you for watching.